something most of us need to come to terms with, and that is that as you deal with emotions, you will automatically need to make different choices based on the new state of love you're in. So, so once you get into a newer state of love or a greater state of love for yourself, love for others and love for God, you will actually make different choices. And you need to be prepared for that. Most people, I find, once they get on this path, they have this view when I go, oh, all right then, all I need to do is feel my emotions and everything will change around me and I won't have to do a thing. But that's not true either. Because most of your emotions, if you're thinking that way, are about you not wanting to do a thing <laughs> and wanting everything to change around you, which is not the way God made this system of this. Right? What he made it is so that you become a self-realized being connected to God, able to control, able to create anything you desire, which will mean in the end that you will actually choose to do things very differently. If the person, I guess, is that self-realisation, then they change themselves. But also, those that are around them will have that reflection. Can they not change to bring that situation back where the thing is harming? Yes, but it's highly unlikely, if you expect that to happen, it's highly unlikely it will happen. The reason why is because if we're expecting things of other people, then, then obviously um, you know, there's a problem or a, a feeling inside of ourselves that needs to be released. But you are right in the sense that if I change my stuff inside of me, the people around me will begin to change as well. Now, some will change in a negative way, in other ways that they will condemn me. Others will change in a positive way in that they choose to follow the same kind of path. But either way, there will be changes around me automatically. So you will find that you'll get to points, for example, you might be living in a relationship even, and then all of a sudden you get to the point where you're feeling, well, no, this relationship is not in harmony with love of myself. Or you realise that you're in the relationship for security and not for love. Right? Or you, you might realise lots of different truths about yourself in this process, and then you will need to act upon them. Because if you choose to not act upon them, you are in fact in a place of fear that needs to be confronted. Does everyone, can everyone see that? So you will need to act differently on this path as you progress. It will be an automatic process though where you realise I can't stay here anymore. So for example with the thing you mentioned earlier about the job, the truth is up to that point where he said there's no more work for you, you were actually working in a job you didn't want anyway, right? And if you weren't being truthful about that and creating something different. And this is what we often do. We often don't create something different because we're in a place of fear rather than in a place of love. And these are all lessons of love that we need to learn through this process. Right. Now, I just want to talk about the falling off. How many of you feel absolutely petrified, by the way, to do that? And you just yeah, quite a quite a number, and I understand. Um, I've had that same feeling. Um, your life will completely change when you do that, and it will change so rapidly that intellectually you will not be able to keep up with it. And you can see if I'm in my mind and I intellectually not being able to keep up with changes, then I'm going to want to get back onto this terra firma place, aren't I? Again, can you see that? So you'll be in this place where you'll be quite terrified. Now the key is to shorten that place to be as short a period as possible. Right? The longer you make that place where you're standing on the edge, the harder it gets. Can you understand why? Because the fear is building, the terror is building. Can you see what you're doing? Living in the terror, living in the fear of, of going further. And you're not choosing to fall off into full reliance, into full trust in God. So my suggestion is to try to keep that place as short as you possibly can. Now, how do you do that? The first thing you do is pray like you've never prayed before. Remember when I talk about prayer, I'm talking about having a longing in your heart for God, and in particular for God's love to enter you. So 
When I say pray, I'm saying talk to God about these feelings you have of fear and terror. Face them. Don't run away from them. Face them. Be honest about them. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of losing all my friends. And then you see others that have fallen off and they have lost all their friends. So it seems valid, doesn't it? That fear? All right. I lost all mine, so you know, you're probably going to lose all yours too. And, and then, so you fall, you fall off into that. And what's that fear? You allow yourself to feel that. Feel why you don't want that. Allow yourself to feel these feelings. Pray to God. Remember, this is about your relationship with God. It's not about your relationship with anyone else. All your relationships with everyone else will change on a constant basis as you progress. New people will come into your life. People who don't like you anymore will leave your life. And people who will just lose interest in you. And if you remain connected with the God and keep progressing towards God, you will finish up having more and more and more friends. But many of them may not be here on earth. <laughs> you might have more friends in the spirit world, but not as many here on earth, right? Because there are less people here on earth currently in the state of a... Of a higher degree of love if you like. So, so you may finish up initially losing friends. But then you'll find after a while things will start changing and more and more people will start being attracted to you because they see this love being reflected in your life. They see your joy and so they then feel it's contagious and they want to know. And then things will start shifting in another direction as you've dealt with those cause and emotions inside of yourself that caused the rejection in the first place. But if you don't connect to God, you're going to feel totally alone. Totally alone. And that's why your connection with God is so important. Because when you've got that, you are never alone. Right? And this is the area where your connection with God is going to be tested. And when I say tested, what I mean is that you're going to have to put your full reliance in God to get beyond that point. And every one of you will face that point. Every single one. Some of you may have felt like you've already faced that point. Right? But every single one of you will face that point. So pray. Talk to God about where you're at. Be honest and truthful. And that's the second thing. Is always focus on the truth. God created my soul. Basic truth this is. God created my soul, therefore God knows how to protect me. I am his child, therefore God knows how to protect me. No, but you're, th you're thinking it, not feeling it. There's a big difference between being in this state here and being in this state here. Look at your law of attraction. Your law of attraction, remember, tells you the truth of where you really are, not where you think you are. Many of you will think that you're in a better condition spiritually than you really are. That your law of attraction is telling you something totally different and you're ignoring it. Many of you are in that condition. Allow yourself to see the law of attraction as your truth. That is the truth being reflected back at you, telling you that there's an issue here, there's an issue there, and so forth. Right? Does that make sense to everyone? Because it's really important that you see the truth not from your perspective, but from God's perspective. There's a truth that I feel like I'm missing something with the way that God's creating creating souls. And say, for example, you know, they, they are in a pristine state and that they could end up in the Gaza Strip or end up in America or, in my case, you know, in Things. And, you know, I know you said there's a mathematical equation and the law of attraction, but I know that I'm missing something that, and I'm not trusting that, you know, we're getting stuck in here to experience all this. From, from a pristine place. Yeah. And why um, he continues with that. Or is that, and then I sort of come to the point, well, it's all free will, but I know, I know I'm missing something. Yeah, that, the issue you haven't faced yet emotionally is that man has created this environment, not God. See, but most of, it, most of us don't face the fact that what we blame God for, really, man is the creator, not God. 
There are lots of things in the universe God didn't create. And one of them is like a walrus. God doesn't create them. Man creates them by their choices. Right? God created the potentiality of them existing, that's all, by giving man free will. And there's a soul feeling that you need to connect with about that. So there's a feeling inside of you towards God that God shouldn't have done that. And that's, so go into that emotion. Allow yourself to feel about that. Get enraged with God if you need to. Get out and punch your bag and, do that. <laughs> and yell and scream and swear at God about Him creating this system. But in the end, when you release that emotion, you have a realisation. And that realisation will be that actually man created this system, not God. I, I know I'm missing something there, but I'm mm. not quite getting it yep. again. Yeah. Now, all you need to step off of this is prayer and truth and one other quality love of yourself even a smidge of love of yourself will, will do it <laughs> why? because if you really love if you really begin to love yourself what will happen is you will realise that actually what anybody else thinks of you is really immaterial isn't it? you won't realize it here because many of you have already told yourself that here right? but you'll actually feel it here you will feel that it doesn't matter anymore what anybody thinks of you and you'll feel that enough to just fall off the edge into trust of God and so my suggestion is and I'm going to finish this discussion now my suggestion is notice where you are in your own progression and if you find yourself hitting this edge place where you're getting quite afraid or terrified or so forth. Allow yourself to see the truth about what's going on inside of yourself and allow yourself to focus on the things that are going to help you move through this place, into this place of fully trusting God. When you do that, your emotions after that time will come thick and fast. But you will also have lots of joyful events happen thick and fast. Right? Up until that point, you're going to feel like your life is a nightmare and you feel like you have no joy whatsoever. Yeah? Many of you have felt that already, right? We've got to that point where you're feeling like, wow, you know, sure, this feels like it's the truth, but gee whiz, like, you know, can I handle this terrible experience? It's because of the fact that we're releasing the blocks that we're going through that. Once we get to this edge of falling off, you'll get into a place where it, you have many, many joyful experiences in the process of processing your own emotion. But before that time, most of the time, it gets to be a bit nightmarish when it comes to dealing with your emotion. So the reason why I wanted to discuss that with you today was because I wanted to give you forewarning of what will be coming up in your lives if you choose to keep following the path of divine love. And what I'm finding is that many have ran away before I've had the chance to tell them <laughs> or warn them of what might happen. So what I want to do is allow you to, you know, just inform you that these things will probably happen in your life and not to become so afraid that you feel like you need to run away, but rather allow yourself to just fall off the edge eventually and work through the emotions that prevent that from occurring.